Hallelujah. Yeah. We saw uh, we saw a scripture. We saw a scripture in First Peter chapter two. Let me read it for the sake of those who were not here last time. Uh, First Peter chapter two. This is the year of knowing God. The people who know their God shall be strong and shall be great exploits. So we shall be talking a lot about knowing God and we shall be talking a lot about being strong. In fact, the whole of next week in the seminar, I shall be going deeper into some of these things if we don't have enough time to talk about. The beauty of the seminar is that we have enough time to talk about uh, things from in the morning, at lunchtime, in the evening. So, and it's not hard. You can attend it online. When we are in our place, we can go to our and we have some of these seminars and things uh, physically. Um, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse Verse number four, he says, Come to him then, that living stone which men tried and threw away, but which is chosen and precious in God's sight. Verse five says, Come, and like living stones be yourselves built into a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God. <coughs> Hallelujah. Come. And be built. Our first time this time we will come. We we'll are happy to have you here. This is our church, Malala. God is doing mighty things. God is doing mighty things, and um, we believe Him for greater things, greater things. Now, last last Sunday, I started talking about. Pillars that will make you strong in 2023. Because we saw that if we are a building that God is working on, the strength of the building is in the pillars. Hallelujah. Amen. If you want your building to be strong, it has to have a strong foundation, has to have strong pillars. And we see verse 5 here says, Come. And like living stones, be yourselves built into a spiritual house. And the point we underlined last Sunday was that the first pillar, the first pillar for us in 2023 is the pillar of coming. Amen? Coming. You must come to the Bible study. You must come to the prayer meeting. You must come to church. You must come. You must make a decision to come. You must come to the prayer meeting. That's why my wife was talking about uh, waking up in the morning to pray. You must come the lunch time. To, you know, you must make a uh, a decision to come. Pillars that will make you strong in 2023. The reason I'm talking about these pillars is because. We want to finish strong. Amen. By the end of the year, we want you to still be strong. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to finish the year strong. But it doesn't just happen. You have to do something about it. Just that happen. Just like that. You have to do something about it. Now, today, I'm going to share about the second pillar that will make you strong in 2023 and that is commitment hallelujah Amen. today i am talking about commitment say commitment, commitment. say commitment. commitment i am talking about commitment the difference between two levels is commitment you know, what will take you from one level to another is commitment. The difference between those who read the news 
and those who make the news is commitment. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. The difference between those who, you know, like in the Olympics, there are those who run, and then there are those who stand at the middle podium at the entrance in the news. The difference between those two, the ones who run and the ones who stand at the seat medals, is what? Commitment. Are you with me so far? Yeah. The difference between those who will get the best out of church and those who will not get anything is commitment. We are talking about commitment. If you are to be strong, you must commit to being committed. <laughs> Hallelujah. You must make, I was watching one of those days, I was watching, um, so I was being one man of God, and they were asking me, how have you managed to stay doing these things for all these years? And says, many years ago, I made a commitment to be committed. Mm -hmm. uh, you must be committed to being committed. Now, commitment, I saw the definition somewhere. Commitment is the quality of being dedicated to a cause. Eh? The state of being given to an activity. The state of giving yourself to something. Commitment requires or means giving myself or giving my time or giving my money or giving my word. Then I say I'm committed. I was at the university last night and uh, I was talking to, um, after I preached there, then uh, from the healing special that I went to preach, uh, that's why my voice is a bit hoarse because you know those things, you go there, people are sharing microphones, you go know, and uh, after I came back, I got a mic, I think someone had something and I picked it, but I'm rebuking it. Amen. By the end of the day, I'll be okay. But when I, I preached afterwards, a young man came to me and was telling me how he needs support, you know, with the men's ministry and things like that. So I told him, I commit myself, that I'm committing myself, that I will be there when you want me on this one, I will be there on this one. So I, by saying I'm committing myself, I'm, I was telling him, I am committing my time. Hmm? I will be there when you need me. The difference between those who are married for one day and those who are married for one year is commitment. Yes, the difference between those who stay in relationships and those who move out of relationships all the time is what? <laughs> commitment. Yeah, there are people who just can't keep uh, in a relationship. Like after, after, after two months, you're just bored. And you just want another. They say, I need another challenge. There's only another child that are just not committed. They explore all over the place. Are you getting this? Yeah. You know, commitment is when you stick with something, even when you're the only one who believes in it, you stick with it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. I tell you, commitment. This church has reached where we are because we are committed. Amen. You can imagine those first days. <laughs> the first, let me tell you a story, a small story. When we were launching, there were so many people here who had come to, like, you know, give us support. So I saw many calls. I told my wife, I think next Sunday we shall need police too. <laughs> <laughs> to look at the cars so that people's cars are protected. The next service, there were only two cars. I went home depressed. <laughs> the reason I am still here is because I committed <laughs> to come on the third service. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Sometimes we give up so soon. You give up so soon. You give up on the business so soon. You you know you give up on the you know sometimes there are people who can't stay on a job for a year. If the boss says ah, he say I'm, I'm resigning. The boss doesn't like me. The, the, the difference between those who stay on and eventually get promoted, promoted is what? Commitment. Are you getting this? Yes. If you are to be strong this year, child of God, you will have to be committed. 
Married people will tell you, they can wake up in the morning and they don't feel like get, staying married. They look at their spouse and like, oh Lord. <laughs> That's the time Pastor William was telling us that on one of those early years, that uh, started looking at the wife like, hmm, the devil trapped me with this one. <laughs> you know. But the reason they have stayed is what? Commitment. You see your wife and your spouse are like, did the devil trick me or something? The reason you stay in there. Is those vows you made for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. When they are making those vows, me when I'm doing a premarital counseling, I do, there's a session about the vows. So we talk to them about the vows that we make because on the wedding day they're actually not thinking. They're just saying, I do, I do. <laughs> so before the, before the actual wedding, we go through the vows. Say, do you see what you're going to do? Eh? Do, you, do you read it? Eh. Because of that, eh, do you know, they just hear they, 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 the priest say, ah, I do. I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> but after the I do, what will cause them to do is commitment. Are we together? Yes. Yeah. The difference between um, even like the choir, the ministers, the difference between singing and singing. <laughs> you know, there is singing and then there is singing. <laughs> you know those things where like people come to lead you in songs and people, have you ever been in the service and like the choir leader even keeps forgetting the songs? But they were leading. Then they tell you to jump and jump for the Lord. Then you whatever, kill her, whatever, jump her. Then the time to the left. But oh, when the song has gone, they're like, what is it? What should be the next song? The difference is commitment. Oh, you, you come and some, and to be a power you they talk about remixing. Some of the remixes the song, like, like the first line is the actual line of the song. The second line, they pull something from that. The third line, they pull a certain verse. They are just remixing it. That he is the Lord, he is God of the earth, he is the Lord. They are just remixing this. Whatever line comes in the head, they are not committed to practicing. When people don't do voice training and they don't work on their voices, they will always be telling us, ah, don't mind the voice. Just listen to the words. I tell them, why don't you just give us the words and we read them? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You, Macquarie, you must be committed. You come here. You know, I, there's a time I was in the choir. I have not been in the choir. Then we would come, and then there's a session of the, the, those things of breathing, whatever. <laughs> breathing, what? Then, we are no fault. We are no fault. Then you say all those things and whatever. Doing those voice training, they are trying to get us committed to bring out the best. The difference between the mediocre and the excellent is commitment. Yeah. I tell you the truth. Yeah. If you are not committed, you be mediocre. You just keep saying the grace is enough. Okay. The grace is enough. Then you God to understand. There is nothing about. You know, you have to give God your best. The Bible says you shall love the Lord your God with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your soul. That is commitment. But are you getting this? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, what will keep you strong in 2023, my dear friend, is commitment. It's commitment. When you feel like giving up, commitment. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh. Commitment. The apostles, the secret to their ministry, in Acts chapter 6, verse 4, they say, But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. When you read it, to put the, that scripture in context, the number of the disciples had increased, and there was contention because. Some of the people were being neglected in the distribution of food. So the apostles had to find themselves in a situation where they had to serve at tables. 
But they realized the serving at tables was interfering with their primary responsibility. And then they said, choose seven men from among yourselves, full of the spirit and full of wisdom. And we shall give them that responsibility. But as for us, we shall give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. Those are the people, the Bible says, they turn the world upside down. They kept themselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The difference between any two preachers is the commitment they have given to the word. The commitment they have given to prayer. You can listen to somebody and you know they never prepare. Has it ever happened? Yes. Yeah. No, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, glory, 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 glory. God is taking you somewhere. I said God is taking you somewhere. I said God is taking somebody here somewhere. Somebody say amen. Like for 10 minutes he's saying those things. He's not prepared. <laughs> not prepared. When you go to a place like St. Francis, when you have 20 minutes, you don't do that, Manana. God is saying, they tell you you have 20 minutes. You must prepare to put everything in 20 minutes, make an altar call and pray for the sea. 20 minutes. Don't say, hey, God is taking somebody somewhere. Hey, I see somebody here. Hallelujah. Two minutes are gone. Hallelujah. My friend, you must commit. Paul told Timothy, study to show yourself a workman who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. We must commit. When the year is starting, there are things like, I want to pray more this year. <laughs> I better do those things. I want to, this year I want to read the New Testament and finish it. This year, I want to read the Old Testament and finish it. For some of you, it could be like, this year, I want to read the book of Titus and finish it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I, I advise you, if you have never finished the Bible, don't start and let's start with that. I want to read the Bible and finish it. You, you are setting yourself up for disappointment. At least you say, I want to read the Gospels and finish them. Or I want to read the New Testament and finish them. But let me tell you, it will not happen just like that. You must be committed. You see, I want to read the Bible and I finish it. I usually do that through the year and whatever. I read it and finish it. So I've started another Bible reading journey. But I am committed. Every day, I have a guide which, like for example, let me read for you. Let me show you. Uh, today, today now we were doing Genesis chapter 36, to, it's called the Bible in one year. So Genesis chapter 36, 38, and Matthew chapter 10, 21 to 42. So I have to commit that before I sleep, I will read those chapters, those portions. Because even reading the Bible through for the whole year, it happens in bits. I must be committed to the bits. If I miss out on like in something, then tomorrow I have to tell myself, you must compensate. If I don't compensate, suddenly I'll realize there are seven chapters that I have that have been read, then I'm like, ah, I think they are the man. <laughs> so if you always just keep back low, you'll not do it. You must do it one chapter at the time. Let me tell you, if you read three chapters in the two chapters in the Old Testament, one chapter in the New Testament, you will finish the Bible and have some days remaining for Christmas. When you're in Christmas festivities for you, are finished. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the issue is commitment. Commitment. When we are talking about these morning glories and what, my friend, Getting out of the bed at 5 a.m., it takes commitment. Kicking those blankets, it's like there are specific demons which blow warm in the bed at 5 a.m. Have you ever noticed that it's like it's warmer at 5 a.m.? <laughs> commitment. The Bible says, Ale, let me read you a scripture about Jesus. You see how he was committed. Let us see Mark chapter 1. But are you getting this? Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Mark chapter 1, verse 35 says, 
in the morning, long before daylight, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. <laughs> that is Jesus. The busiest man in the world. You know how busy Jesus was? But in the morning, he got up and he got out. For you to get up and get out, you must be committed. Prayer does not, you will not just grow in prayer. Just. Just. You will have to be committed. Are you getting this? Is somebody getting this? Is, is this a good message? <laughs> You're very quiet. You're very quiet. The church, <laughs> your community. Yes. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. I want you to see the secret of the church. The secret of the early church. And we try to partner ourselves after the early church. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Hallelujah. They were committed. They devoted themselves. They gave their time. They gave, they were available. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. You know, a number of times you're there and someone is introducing themselves somewhere like at a party. What? Like, uh, praise the Lord. I, uh, I fellowship with this child. I never see him, but they like to associate with you know because it's a good church. So if they're at a party, they mention that there was there's even a time I was um, at a certain party in uh, in Katete, and uh, one of the politicians told us that now for my spiritual growth, there is this church which I'm committed to, but for usual political and. Uh, social uh, capital with people and a member of this other church. So he knew that for him to grow spiritually, he has to commit himself to this church. It's a small church somewhere in Katete. He says, I'm committed there for my spiritual growth, but for being a chairman of the board of something, <laughs> big one, and this other big one. <laughs> ah, praise the Lord. They devoted themselves for you to get the best out of uh, a church, out of a fellowship, out of, you must commit to it. The Bible says, give and it shall be given to you. Full measure, press down, shake a bell, run over, shall men pour into your bosom. Before you receive, you give. You get this? I teach when I'm teaching about giving, that in the New Testament, the best way to receive is to give. You want much? Give much. Bible says, he who sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. Are you getting this? Commitment. You have to commit, like, if you say you are committed to the church, on a Sunday, the Sunday morning is blocked. You don't have, you don't look at your programs and say, which one can I remove so that I can go to church? Sunday morning is blocked. These other activities of the church, you are blocked like, you see, the way I usually look at it is, you see, when there are certain pillars in a place, if water, if suddenly there was a flood and water entered, and there were pillars, the water can't go through the pillars. The water will move around the what? The pillars. Why people find it so hard? They're like, you know, I can't handle. I'm so busy. I'm failing to find. They keep asking me, how do you do it? How do you do it? You are a teacher. You are a writer. You are a preacher. You are what? How do you do it? I tell them there are certain things which are constants in my life. Okay? There are certain things that are pillars. Then the rest of the programs have to find their way around them. No. I, for, for, for example, for me, I don't say that I am, um, I am a doctor who is a Christian. I am a Christian who also happens to be a doctor. 
It's very different. Which means my being a doctor and all those other things, they revolve around my being a Christian. If you are a Christian, if you are a doctor who also happens to be a Christian, uh, when there is a big deal, eh, a big job or whatever, you will first take it and then think about being a Christian later. But when you are a Christian who happens to be a doctor, you will even refuse certain jobs because they interfere with your being a Christian. Commitment means saying no to certain offers because they interfere with your Christianity. Even if you're quiet and preaching well, commitment. Commitment means, you know, if you want to grow in a certain area, commitment means you take an extra course. Even when you have to study at night, or you take an extra course, you put in uh, some two more hours. That means putting in two more hours means switching off telenovela. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen. Yeah. Amen. Commitment. Do you know how my commitment gets tested? Yesterday we were coming for healing session, and then I saw the lineup. My city versus my new. <laughs> When that was the one that is one, I looked at it, but I am committed. <laughs> I told my, my wife, I was telling my wife, uh, you know, you know when you're trying to insinuate, like you're trying to say so that she can say, yeah, you can come later. So I'll say, you see, uh, you know, there, there's this, uh, have you seen what the game uh, said, but you have healing station. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, okay. <laughs> I am committed. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. I'm committed. You must decide that, you know, you know there is, there is one like you, there, there is a time I realized that I would watch news, like you watch uh, NBS live at night, <laughs> after NBS there is, um, the, the, no, before, before that, 7 p.m. there is BBC, then 7.30 there is Focus on Africa, takes you to 8. 8 there is a... Uh, those of you who like, the other guys who are always abusing people in this, they are called who? Those are those guys who abuse people and laugh about it. Eh? And God. So you find somebody there also on that. God. Then after that, NBS like at 9. Then after that, there is that other thing which called Agatha or something. So you find you have spent four good hours watching the world, the news. And then, those days when I was still on Facebook, I realized, have you, you would be on Facebook, and then you scroll, you scroll, and then you realize you have started reading the things you had already read. <laughs> that means it's like a, a, a full circle. You have gone through the full circle and have come back. And amazingly, you would still continue scrolling the things you had already read. And you continue scrolling, and then you're clicking like, you're clicking what? You read it and say, really? You type that, really? So you spend the whole day, you're typing, really? Sure? What? <laughs> what? Am I talking about somebody you know? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen. Commitment, Evans, means you switch off that kind of Facebook and what and come here and practice the drums. If you want to play. <laughs> Commitments. <laughs> there are people who are like they really they are, they are like you know this church has people who are members by WhatsApp. <laughs> they are always telling us we shall be with you in spirit. There is nothing like being with us in spirit. You see, when there is holy communion, we don't take communion with you in spirit. The body is eaten with the with the mouth. And now. You reach a point, you maybe you're looking for a job and they say, you need a recommendation from who? From your pastor. And then you come say, pastor, and they ask me for, say, you are who? Say, I am so, but you remember me, pastor? Say, oh, uh, what did you, where did you ask me? Say, pastor. I'm a member of the church, but you know, rarely I'm, I, I, I'm rarely there. But I'm a member. Then the pastor has to give you a form. So fill this form with information about yourself. It should not happen like that. The pastor should know you. 
How that happens is that you are committed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The, the secret of this ministry, why we are able to buy all these things, is not because we have a lot of money in the economy, but we have people that are called committed partners. People who have said we are going to give 50,000 per month or 100,000 per month. Or people in the church whom you know, they are committed to giving their tithe and their offering. So you can be able to make a projection and you can go to a guy and tell him, uh, I'm going to pay for this land. You don't have any money in the pocket. You just have committed partners. No, that is the secret. All these things, we bought them because you just go and tell somebody that, uh, yes, uh, can, can you pay like in three months time or whatever? You, 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 you are just speaking uh, boldly because you are standing on the strength of committed people. Are we together? Yes. Commitment. Commitment is going to take you from one degree of glory to another. It is more than just saying, I'm going from one degree of glory to another. In the name of Jesus, I'm going from one degree. My friend, you will start from getting there again. At a certain point, you have to step on the river Jordan if the waters are to part. Imagine if the children of Israel had stood at the banks of Jordan and said, we are going to the next level. We are going to Canaan. Then we are going to, they would have stayed there up to today. But they had to step on the waters for them to part. Yeah. Commitment. 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 I have to wake up every morning to pray for the church. To pray for this church. To pray for you people. Things don't happen. You see, it is a very supernatural thing for somebody to wake up in the morning and decide to come to church. It takes God. With a lot of, there's so much activity, corporate league, give what, somebody can choose to go to the gym, somebody can choose to go wear sports, what, jogging, what. So you have to pray that somebody will decide not to go to jog and to come to church on a Sunday morning. Commitment. Hallelujah. Amen. Huh. Are you getting this? Yes. It's giving more of my time. Let me read what I wrote here. Commitment is giving time to my gift. Okay? If I discover that this is the gift I have, then I give time to it. God has given me a gift of writing. I've authored a number of books. But they don't just happen. Sometimes, you know, you publish a book, there are pastors that they come to me after you publish the book and you come and say, lay hands on me. I also want to publish a book. <laughs> it's more than laying hands on you, brother. You have to be committed. I have to put extra time writing, extra time. You know, the theme of writing is that you can spend a full day writing one paragraph. The thing about writing, you, you write, you don't like the sentence. You rewrite it, you don't like it. You write it, you look at it, you're also not convinced about it. Come back next tomorrow and you write again, you write again. It takes commitment of time. It takes commitment of resources. This, the, like the ministry, you know, those of you that God is going to call in ministry and whatever, you know, for a ministry to go somewhere, you must commit your resources. You must commit your time, your money. Takes commitment. When we had our first men's conference in Kavali, uh, they came and told me uh, they, 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 they don't have the money for the meat. And they, you know, the conference was at White House in a big hotel and hotel, but the money had run out in different things. So I had to go to the bank, empty my account and buy meat for lunch for the men. That was the first conference. Later, in other conferences, as people came on and started partnering with the ministry, then I had more people giving so that now I was also among the people giving. But initially, I was footing the bills. Commitment. Are you with me? Yes. Commitment. You must commit if you believe in a certain business. You commit, you put in capital, you don't know where it goes, you put in it again, you put in it again, you put in 
it again, you put it again, and then you get a profit like five years later, six years later. Am I not right, Doctor? Am I not right, David? You know, it takes time. Some of these things, then you keep. It's like you're sinking in money, like you're seeing money in the business, but you have, you are committed. Must be committed. If you want to be excellent, commitment also means starting again when you are failing. <laughs> Hallelujah. They are, you know, I can assure you that some ventures shall fail. I'm not like a false, uh, like a prophet of Blue Mower, but they, they, it's such that sometimes because we are human beings, sometimes you project badly. Eh? Or you, you plan badly or whatever, and the thing falls flat on its face. But you don't stay on your face down. The Bible says a righteous man falls seven times and rises again. Commitment is telling yourself, rise up. Yeah. Commitment is deciding I am starting again. Starting again. You know, I have a prophetic gift. <laughs> But I have told my, there's a time I prophesied, I prophesied and it worked for somebody. Then I knew now I had. The next time I prophesied, it didn't happen. <laughs> I was going to say that uh, these things are not, but I had to tell myself now, like the healing ministry, you have to be committed to praying for the sick, even when things don't work out. <clears throat> you pray. <laughs> It's Pastor Winner who used to tell us, sometimes when you pray and things don't work out, you, have, you start planning how to sign now. <laughs> well, you know, today things are refused, so you start planning how to sign out of the service. But even when you sign out, you must be committed to start again. Amen. You must be committed to start again. You know, my wife, do you agree that she, <clears throat> she sings well? How many agree that she sings? <laughs> Let me tell you a story about my life. When we were at Mass, in first year, she tells me the story. When she came, they gave her the microphone to sing. When she held the microphone and sang, everybody was like, ah! Like, she made a certain sound. And everybody was like, what is that? They held their ear. But she committed herself. <laughs> because that time when she did that, uh, I wasn't there. She committed herself and kept singing. Eventually, I saw her singing. Hallelujah. That's one of the benefits of commitment on her regard. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. Glory to God. Let me tell you, the first time I saw her, she was singing. Bread of life, send out from glory. Many things you are on her. I saw the God singing on the God. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about commitment when you don't come there. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But she was committed. I think I also was not committed when I saw her. Hallelujah. <laughs> commitment, commitment, commitment. Commitment for a spouse sometimes means a husband especially that you live, you are, and I'm saying, let me even say into the camera for the husband who I'm not attended today. Commitment means, you know you have this group of people and they have interesting KB. Commitment means leaving them and going home to be with your wife. <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen. The, the KB is nice. There's a time I was counseling a couple. and. When you see people separate, don't think that the, some of the promised man will bomb the house or whatever. When people separate, it is for funny things. There's a time the woman was telling me, he's always watching football at wherever. He comes back at 2 a.m. and whatever. I told the guy, man, can't you just watch the football from home? Commitment is staying home. Sometimes commitment for the brother is. Can I say this? Yes. Can I say this? Yes. Commitment for the brother is when the sister, you know they usually talk about something simple with so many explanations. So commitment is listening without offering. So you know, for us men, when she gives the fact, you're already working it out. When she says it, why didn't you do this? Commitment is just saying, hmm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 
and you look her straight in. You know, <laughs> that time, that time, my wife is always like, but are you even listening to me? <laughs> Don't realize anything. She goes on and on and on and on and on and on. And like, oh, the thing is, it should. But that should, should be. But she goes on and on and on. And the commitment is also you go on and on and on and on and on. And that Moses, you go on and on and on and on and stalking. Yes, yes. Ah, oh, really? Ah, oh, mm -hmm. for them they get healing from talking. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are ministering to her by just listening. That is commitment. You, you put your attention. Commitment is not this. Commitment is not this. What? What? Uh, yeah. you, you, are, you, are, you are following your thing and you're listening to her. Commitment is putting the phone where? In the pocket. And you listen to the sister. Sister say, Amen. I'm preaching. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you. Commitment means when you go out on a date with your wife, keep your phone. Sometimes you go on a date and you have gone somewhere and people are on a date and both of them are on what? Oh. On the phone. You're like, what have they come to do? They, why are they here? They are all on the phone, uh, headphones, either headphones here and they are on the date. Commitment is giving yourself time looking each other in the eye. There's a time we were in the marriage fellowship and uh, they told by the marriage to have a, a fellowship next Sunday. Is it next Sunday the last one of the month? No. Hey, I think I was too eager for it. I was too eager for it. Anyway, they told us that you should have a challenge that every day when you come home, you spend a minute just looking in your spouse's eyes. Just a minute. I was like, huh? Every day you come home and you just. <laughs> that is really complicated. Hallelujah. But can you see how one minute is hard? Oh, looking at someone's eyes just. <laughs> Commitment. Commitment is putting in an extra 10 minutes to pray. Commitment is saying, I am going to fast. Even when <laughs> they've told me that when you fast for three days, you die. You don't die. Mm -hmm. Commitment is you decide to fast. I tell you, when you're fasting, don't start visiting people at lunchtime. <laughs> That's the challenge. Somebody is fasting, then you're visiting people at evening tea. You're not committed to your fast. Because somebody, if you're like on the edge, and someone, you're fasting, and someone says, please, a cup of tea, come and have it. You'll say, quickly, you'll make a quick decision and say, anyway, should I know I'm fasting? Tomorrow I'm going. <laughs> and you eat. <laughs> Commitment, you go away from food when you're fasting. Are you learning something today? Yes. <laughs> Commitment, giving myself my gift. Eh? Choir members, you give yourself, you listen to more songs. Commitment is when Eddie listens to the songs, listen how, how they are played. Yeah, you listen. You know, my, my son has been learning drums, Daniel, and he can listen to a song and tell you how the drum is going. For him, when he's listening to the song, he's listening for the drum only. Commitment is you give yourself, you know, you know, you listen to songs again and again so that when you are backing up, you don't pretend you're singing. Yeah, there is also that kind of thing about choir people. Like, you don't know the song, so you can you, you create an impression you're singing, but you're not. Because you don't know the song. May I see those things? Praise the Lord. I see those things. Well, they are. But they are not talking. Choir members, praise the Lord. Commitment. I am talking about pillars that will keep you strong in 2023. Amen. Commitment is one of them, I tell you. Commitment is one of them. Commitment to your job. Don't be the kind of believer who arrives at 9 a.m. You know, bosses who are believers have a challenge. 
a believer, you have a, a, a worker who is a believer, and then they are coming to work 10 a.m. Overnight, why? Why the overnight? They did not hire an intercessor. Hallelujah. Yeah. They hired a worker. When it is work, then it be work. Praise the Lord! Yeah. And then, by the way, your commitment, like people at work and what? Because there are those kind of systems of signing in book, whatever. So for them, somehow, they force you to be committed. You know that you're really committed when you're self-employed. Okay? Arriving at the, at the shop, you know, okay? telling yourself, I'm going to arrive at A, I'm going to arrive at the business, I'm going to open. I, you know, I tell, you know, I, when I'm not uh, in Kawai, when I'm here, I'm working. And uh, I, I get up, I get my bag, I tell my children, I have gone to work. And I'll come here to the office to pray for you people, to write books and whatever. And I come as if the way I go to work at 8 a.m., I also pick my bag and I go to work. And these days I also do it when I'm coming to Sunday. I pick my work and I carry my bag because I'm coming to work. Hallelujah! I am committed! I am committed. I'm a committed pastor. That's why when you when you don't come, you see me in your inbox saying, Where were you? How are you? I am a committed pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Commitment. Commitment is what will keep you strong. Commitment will distinguish you from the rest. Amen. To be a man and a woman of distinction, you must be a man and a woman who is committed. Be committed to your church. Be committed to your job. Be committed to your marriage. Be committed to the like family altar at home. Let me tell you, to keep your family. I don't know. I don't know why it is easy to pray when you're here. It is easy to pray when you're very but at home. It is, have you ever noticed? At home it becomes hard to gather people to pray. I don't know whether it's because people are used to you or whether people are just tired and what, but gathering people to pray at home takes commitment. Am I, am I preaching, sir? Next week, let me promise you, next week I'll preach about uh, how God is taking you to Mexico City. <laughs> <laughs> but those are the things. But then you'll be lifting chairs and say, I'm going there in the name of Jesus. I would have been saying, this year God is taking you somewhere. Say somewhere. Hallelujah. <laughs> Here I'm showing you how you're going there. Let the others prophesy where you're going. We are showing you how you are going there. It will take commitment. Amen. Hmm. What else did I write? Commitment. Commitment is... The difference between two seasons is commitment. Is commitment. Commitment is doing something again and again and again. Commitment is doing something even when they don't say thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor, Pastor never thanks me. Pastor never says it was a good song. But you come and yeah. sing again. Yeah. Hallelujah. You're committed. Pastor didn't greet me. I am mean, leaving that church. Pastor doesn't greet me. What? Me, I already saying. You know, before you go home, Make sure you greet your pastor. So if you don't greet me, it is you who are not greeting me. <laughs> Hallelujah! Yeah. Commitment! Giving, growing your skill, listening to... Like if, if there is a certain area you feel you're called, maybe an area of leadership, maybe an area of music, maybe an area... So commitment means getting experts in that area and listening to them. Eh? Commitment is finding out how others are doing it. Eh? Finding out how others. You still have a, a decade. So commitment is moving around, finding out how others are doing it. Have they changed their diet quite a bit? And whatever, can you also introduce something? Can you introduce a fruit or something? You know, people will always be coming to where things are different. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Commitment is started. Is uh, if I have to uh, be a uh, to feed you well on a Sunday morning, I must commit time to pray, to study. Commitment in marriage means you be part of the marriage fellowship. Let me tell you, marriage, counseling doesn't end when we wait. Counseling is an ongoing process. Commitment means to your marriage means you want to learn more, learn how to communicate better, learn your uh, spouse's love. Uh, yeah, today I'm over talking about marriage. I don't know why. You know, like, maybe you are uh, prophesying for some people. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. You know, commitment means studying your spouse's love language. There's something called love language. If you don't know the love language of your spouse, you can be talking two different languages the whole year. And the husband is like, but why doesn't she? And the husband, the wife is like, but why doesn't he understand me? There's a time when in the marriage fellowship, there was almost a war. Almost a war. Because the sisters were insisting how we need to carry flowers. <laughs> and the guys were saying, but if I have bought you a piece of land, is it not more than the, the flower? Yeah, if I buy a car and you're moving comfortably, do I need to buy flowers? Uh, we need flowers, Jennifer. <laughs> wow. I tell you, you must be able to understand these things. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. You know, some guys they are there, they have their girlfriends and whatever. And the guy, every time he meets the, the girlfriend, tell us pray. My friend. <laughs> And then he's always going to pastor, pray for me. Every time I get your sister, they leave me. Pray for me. I say, why is it that every time they get your sister, they leave? Because the sisters, they want to know that when they marry you, they will have a friend they can talk with about Mohosi, about Uganda, about Zubola. But I like, which verse did you read? <laughs> And then you find somebody is always binding the boss. This boss, this boss will to promote me in the name of Jesus. Then this boss will be transferred. Oh, Limba. The boss will stay there. You have to work hard. Because when you work hard, you're working unto the Lord. And verse 24 says, Knowing with all certainty that it is from the Lord and not from men that you receive your inheritance. When you work hard, God will use men to promote you. Yeah. Amen. 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 Oh. Let me read another one. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 12. The secret of Paul's life was commitment. What made Paul strong was commitment. 
Philippians chapter 3, as I draw to a close. Philippians 3, 12 says, Not that I have already attained, or I'm already perfected, but I press on. That I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Verse 13. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. One thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. 14. I press towards the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I press on. He says, one thing that I do, this year, child of God, have one thing that you're committed to. Concerning the goal you want to attain, concerning the thing you want to achieve, have that one thing that you do. And you do it well and you do it consistently, you will attain your goal. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I press on, he says, I press on. Whether there are difficulties, whether there are challenges, whether I fall, whether I make mistakes, I put myself up together and I press on. Hallelujah. Amen. I press on. You press on. Said, I pressed on towards the goal of the price. When he pressed on, finally, this is the last verse I'm reading. Finally, this is what he said. The summary of his life. I pray that at the end of your life, you shall also be able to say this verse. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. Listen to the concluding statement of a committed man. Second Timothy 4, 7. The committed man says. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I have fought the good fight. This world and this year shall have many fights. You must be committed. At the end of the year, let us not wait for when we are going to die. At the end of the year, you'll be there on Saturday first and you say, concerning this fight, I have fought it. <coughs> concerning this race, I have finished it. Concerning this faith, I have kept the faith. You're there and you're a sister and you're saying, I have kept the faith. You're on your wedding day and you're saying, I have kept myself. It takes commitment to keep yourself pure. I tell you the truth. Young ladies, young men, it takes commitment to keep your... Can I say it like this, the way I want to say it? It, kept, it takes commitment to keep your zip up. You say, now there are many women who are. Hallelujah. Because, you know, when you're watching the movies, and the what, the adverts, the what, everybody makes promiscuity no more, sleeping around no more, whatever, billboards and what. Every, our generation is bombarded with all kinds of information. They try to make it, uh, you know, they try to make it, these things like no more and whatever. These things are not no more. The Bible says be holy as he is holy. It says the pure in heart shall see God. It takes commitment to keep yourself. It takes commitment to walk away from a sister's room at 9 p.m. It takes commitment later to tell that guy to go away. Hallelujah. Amen. See a guy in the room starting to look a bit disorganized. He's talking things which are not easy to understand. He's sitting in a family way telling him, go away, I'm saved. Amen. <laughs> Have you been blessed? They clap your hands. I have fought the good fight. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. Amen. I have kept the faith. Amen. Keep the faith this year. Amen. 